Pretty Hello kitty. everyone, <laughs> pretty kitty. <laughs> This is Mike Check 95 with the usual cohort. Your boy, Joker Orphan. But we're also along with Lyson. And And we would have Krieger here, but he's too busy listening to Lord of the Rings. Probably you fools. And we are stepping into probably the very first superhero series of the channel since we started taking this seriously. Um, we reviewed the very, very first Spider Man film of 2002. Toby Maguire. Now, since Krieger is not here, I have to do the numbers. So, before we begin, I would like to reveal the ratings and the money this film made. Critics rated this film a 9 out of 10, but audiences, as of right now, have rated a 6.7 out of 10. Don't go to Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, yeah. The budget of this film. Nobody likes Rotten Tomatoes. The budget of this film food. is $139 million. But they boxed office eight hundred and twenty-five million back. <laughs> it was the it was the highest rated movie at the time. This was yeah. one of the biggest superhero films of the early two thousands. Of course, the first one that started this whole trend was Blade. But this one probably made double the amount of money that Blade did. Um, fuck it. Who would like to go first? I like this movie. It's a classic. At the same time, in later movies, I thought they'd cover it up, but they didn't. He shoots webs out his hands. Yeah, it's just weird. It's never happened before. There is a verse. It's never happened since. There is a there is a universe version of him that does do that. There is it's a version just, of it. It's just weird. Always bothered me. Um, He's got to look at the multiverse. I do. Other than that, I all really the other like ones this have movie. to make their well, out of like parts and science yeah, and shit. He's the, he's the only Spider-Man that's able to like produce it. Yeah, yeah. Which it does is. make for some funny moments. Quotable things. The Go Web Go. Everybody loves the Go Web Go. I really liked it as a kid growing up. It was really good. Uh, it's still really good. I don't know. I'm going to give it. It's, it's it's not one I can watch over and over and over again. I don't and know. So I, it's definitely something I like watching. It's stuff that's on my watch again list. So it's, it's going to be a solid nine. Nine to watch it again. All right, Lyson, here we go. Oh. It has been probably fucking over a decade since I actually seen this. Again. <laughs> but there's parts of it graphically still holds up. Other parts, not so much. As always, fucking Defoe fucking owns it. McGuire is still, in my mind, the best Spider Man. People will argue that one, and they can be wrong. You're welcome to your wrong opinions. I would give it, yeah, I would say a, I think it still holds up. I would give it a, probably at least a nine. Um, well, this was probably one of the very first superhero films I saw as a kid in theaters. Um, I used to watch this film on VHS at least three times a day until I what burnt the VHS VHS? tape out. What is that? You're old. I remember the days when Spider-Man was on new release and we wouldn't be allowed to rent it for like three oh, months right. because they kept it on new release for three Some months. Some of the... Yeah. I have, a, I think I have a couple trivia things. Um, one was obviously um, Kirsten Dunst and McGuire dated after this film and it obviously didn't work out that well in the end. <laughs> um, the original trailer had Spider-Man swinging through the city with the Twin Towers in the background, but that was before 9-11 happened and after 9-11 happened that they had to take it out due to sensitivity yeah, and whatnot. Little things here and there, like the CGI holds up for the most part. Like there's some there's some bits here and there where I'm just kind of like, oof, oof, yeah. like the, 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 it, it aged a tiny bit. But it, there are some bits that made up for it. Um, one of the things that kind of, not like really kill it for me and whatnot, and I know it's because he's playing the character and everything, but I kind of, I kind of feel like the dialogue with McGuire is a little you know, spaced out and a little too awkward and whatnot, which I get it, it's part of the character and everything, but after seeing it 
several thousand times because this was the original film I'd watch a thousand times before I saw The Dark Knight. Defoe and J.K. Simmons for me were like the gods of this movie. <laughs> they were the gods. <laughs> but McGuire's Spider Man, he was a very good first Spider Man, I would say. Unfortunately, I won't go a nine, but I'll go with an eight and a half. That's still high. In my opinion, I would love to watch this film over and over again, but I just kind of feel like there are some tidbits here and there that kind of hurt the movie. Not like horribly, but it's like, oh, the dialogue. Oh, oh. But that story, though. It, it is, it is, but it's just tiny things here and there, like kind of bring it down a tiny bit. But again, I don't hate the film. For me, it is an eight and a half. A great childhood film for me. James Franco did amazing. Always love to see him in movies. Funny. It was a great Speech movie bubble. overall. I would not sit around and watch it over again because there are just so many other movies that you can watch nowadays. But it was a good movie. I haven't seen it in a while. You know, one of those movies you could get down to. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, that's the third one. <laughs> that's the third one, guys. <laughs> Anyways, I think it's yet. an eight. Eight? Yeah, eight's pretty high. That's pretty solid numbers yeah, across the board yeah. there. There were some bits I want to point out in the film that I actually noticed again in this movie. There were some parts where uh, Osborne, uh, Norman Osborne was talking, but his mouth wasn't moving. Yeah. I noticed the one part where it looked like when Goblin Spider-Man landed on the side of the building during the first little initial fight. It looked like you could see the building kind of pushing <laughs> in. Maybe. Like, I might have just been my eyes fucking with me, but it, it looked like it. When he was climbing? Well, it was when the when he Goblin flew. first attacked at the parade, and then he lands on the side of the building, or whatever. Yeah. You could see kind of a cushion, gotcha. almost like a back uh, look like. Could we say that Kirsten Dunst is one of the original um, damsel in distress slash scream queens when it comes to yeah, the superhero scream, films? Scream queen, 100%. See, that's, that, was most, that was most of her uh, I mean, dialogue was... Yeah. <laughs> And okay, Kirsten Peter. Dunst. I don't think I've seen a movie she hasn't been in that she hasn't screened. Really? Although a fair point about Franco that uh, Lyson brought up while we're watching it, um, he hasn't really done anything super serious like this since after the trilogy. He's done a lot of two, know, two for comedy he's shit. Yeah, he's funny. A lot of comedy stuff, and I'm just kind of like, what What happened? Like, he used to be a serious funny. action. He used to be an edge king. He is hilarious. He still is an edge king. I'm, I'm the edge king. In trouble. But I smoked the weed. He got in trouble. Hating on this man. He he got some, we didn't say he wasn't he good. We just was, say, was it because of Spring Breakers? We missed his series. Spr no, Spring Breakers. I don't miss serious. He missed no, serious. It was like spring Breakers. He, he was like flirting with like underage people, if I remember right. Ah, so John Travolta. Yeah, he was doing some sexist, sketchy dude shit. That's what happens when him and his brother's part, if I remember right. But whatever did. the fuck his brother's name is, Franco the Second. This is actually a lot shorter than I thought it would be because I don't know what else to say about it. Right. It's good. I mean, it's a, good it's a classic you. movie. Yeah, don't watch it. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you probably should have by now. Surprised we don't have a review out. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you haven't seen it, bro, what you doing with your life? I mean, yeah. Watch a Spider Man. Put it's your pants people. on. Turn off Netflix. Watch Spider Man. Put your down. Put the chili away. <laughs> no chill. Just no chill, just you movie. Well, no, I'm gonna leave Forget the chill. <laughs> there were some things about the film that I was kind of like, it was like a combination of like elements from like kind of the newer Superman, no, Superman superhero films. And then there were some elements that kind of reminded me of Batman and Robin which made me kind of cringe here and there. Yeah. It was like a blend of like the current day superhero films at that time <laughs> with the cringiness and the god awful superhero but great comedy of Batman and Robin. Holy rusted metal Batman. I can't really pinpoint scenes that much. I think I want to say the part where he's all like you know who I am. Your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And I'm like George Clooney would say that if he was Batman. <laughs> yes. But he would be like hi there. I'm Batman. Yeah. <laughs> Ignore my nipples. <laughs> well, um, I guess if there are no more no more final thoughts, because I know we're going to continue this series, uh, at, at least I will, um, there's going to be at least seven, eight more, because we're also including the Venom movies as well. This is Mike Check 95 <laughs> with another Mike Check Productions Mike Check movie review, and we will continue on our Spider-Man review series when we get to Spider-Man 2, but...
I'm here with my usual cohorts. Jackie. <laughs> Bob. <laughs> Jim. My <laughs> and name his, is Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> my name is George the Spanner. And we are signing out. He is, he is Gooch. I forget to do something. Gooch the third. Gooch, Gooch the third. And we're yeah. out. Uh, I'm so glad we finished the night with Spider-Man and not with Lamageddon. <laughs> yes. Good God. Oh my-